Challenge of the GoBots 1984 Cartoon Explored The Transformers franchise has thrived throughout the years both on the small and large screens thanks to Michael Bay's huge and occasionally monstrous live-action adaptations. My name is Optimus Prime. We are autonomous robotic organisms from the planet Cybertron. The toys are once again selling like hotcakes, flying off shelves as swiftly as they did in the 1980s at the zenith of Transformers popularity. GoBots was essentially the same concept as the Transformers, however, it was the first on the market, debuting in 1983, about a year before the Transformers. The initial five-part run that began the GoBot series is called Challenge of the GoBots, the original miniseries. Essentially, the plot is similar to that of the original Transformers miniseries. Good GoBots, who are gardens, strive to preserve Earth after some villainous GoBots, also known as the Renegades, plot to take over the world. My force field can only give us temporary protection. From then, it's all action, with shape-shifting cars, young heroes, and wacky characters. Challenge of the GoBots is available on DVD as one of Werner's archive collection on a single-layer DVD-5 in full frame. There are no other features included. According to the packaging, this DVD was restored from the actual film elements rather than being copied from an obsolete tape source. Challenge of the GoBots should bring a smile to the faces of nostalgia geeks with a soft spot for this underappreciated transformation series. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. What, is awesome? what the cartoon television series is all about. It all began in Japan. At the time, they were known as Machine Robo. Did you also know that these morphing robots were designed to be human-piloted mechs? When the toys were introduced in the United States, they were reimagined as sentient robots replete with a backstory that gave them nicer names and backgrounds. There were the benevolent robot guardians Gobotron, as well as the villainous Renegades. It's unsettlingly similar to the Autobots or Decepticons from Cybertron, despite the fact that the two series were created independently. Furthermore, the GoBots had their own cartoon series that shared a few cast members with the Transformers animation. They even had their own theatrical animated picture named GoBots Battle of the Rock Lords, starring the titular Morphing Rocks. The GoBot series, however, did not persist long in the wake of the more successful Transformers. GoBots had to fight with two competing factions of GoBotrons changing robots, the Valiant Guardians, and the Malevolent Renegades. Leader 1 headed the Guardians, which also included Turbo and Scooter. All of the Renegades were commanded by Psykill, and their ranks included Crasher and Copter. Those Guardians are driving me crazy! Maybe we should give up. Instead of weaponry, the characters fired energy blasts from their fists. Gobots, like the Transformers, had recurring female characters. The female robots, on the other hand, were built similarly to the males with only Crasher, having any distinct female features. The occurrence of various genders among the GoBots was explained by their genesis as biological organisms. The series centered on the main three robots from each party. Leader 1, Turbo, as well as Scooter, versus Psykill, Crasher, and Copter, who were almost always present with additional characters appearing to alternate in guest star roles. There was no evident division between the two factions of GoBots, although it was explicitly stated on the package, neither the figures nor the toys had any distinguishing insignias or marks to show their loyalty. Similarly, there was little design consistency across the factions. The sole theme to a faction was that anything that transformed into a grotesque-looking robot or automobile was a renegade. A species of sentient beings called the Gobings existed in the world of Gobatron thousands of years ago. When the power-seeking terrorist gang known as the Renegades appeared, commanded by a maniac called the Master Renegade, and declared war against the benevolent guardians, civil war occurred in the world. When a renegade disruption mission unintentionally resulted in a massive asteroid crashing with Gobatron, the catastrophic events caused by the asteroid's impact drove the Gobings to extinction. Eventually, the genius who was known to be the last engineer rescued his people by pushing his research to the limit to replace sections of his own flesh 
with mechanical equivalents and transplanting the Gobing's minds into huge robot forms known as Gobots. Thanks to Leader One! Thank the last engineer, he invented this power suit. The Gobots form have extra power after passing through a device that is called the Modifier. All of the Gobots' bodies could convert into different vehicles after finishing his task. The last engineer planned to flee to a pre-planned workshop somewhere in the cosmos, but unfortunately the master renegade hijacked his spacecraft and fled instead. The last engineer put himself in a state of suspended animation under the ground of Gobatron. Meanwhile above, the fight between the Guardians as well as the renegades raged on, with all of them now enclosed in Gobot shells. The planet Earth became embroiled in the fight between Leader One's Guardians and Renegade Psykill in the final part of the 20th century. One of Leader One's lieutenants, Turbo, was seriously injured during one of these encounters. Leader One, reluctant to let his buddy and teammate perish, set out on a journey to discover the mythical Last Engineer. Leader One tracked down the person he thought was the Last Engineer, however Leader One had unintentionally unleashed the Master Renegade, albeit he did restore Turbo to win the Guardian's confidence. I feel like a new Gobot! You can thank the Last Engineer! The Guardians later discovered the genuine Last Engineer who played a key role in undermining the partnership between Psy Renegade's kills as well as the Master Renegade. The Master Renegade eventually escaped the Renegade's imprisonment and harassed both groups, most notably invading the Unicom colony and New Earth. A ship that huge, so close to a planet, would affect the climate, even the forces of gravity. Main characters of the cartoon series, The Guardians. Leader One. Leader One is the Guardian's leader in the animated television show Challenge of the Gobots. He is a courageous leader who genuinely cares about all his people. He believes that no single individual should be in control. He believed in the Guardian's democratic system. This prompted his erstwhile companion Psykill to break off and leave the Guardian. He became Leader One's fiercest opponent after taking command of the villainous renegades. Leader One has the ability to fly, unleash energy blasts, and create a force field which swiftly depletes his his power reserve. He has been observed using Garden power suits which improve his strength and speed. I'm ready. How about you, Turbo? Let's go get him! Turbo. Turbo is a character from the GoBots toy line and the later challenge of the GoBots animation. The character morphed into a concept vehicle. Turbo was one of the fiercest guardians in Leader One's right-hand GoBot. In his automobile form, he is one of the quickest GoBots. He is also both strong and powerful. The GoBot Turbo is indeed one of the toughest guardians. However, he can be pretty dumb and stubborn at times, oftentimes injuring himself severely as a result of his heroism. He has been among Leader One's most devoted troops, and he and Buddy Scooter, have a friendly brute strength versus brains competition. He also has an ongoing battle with Renegade Crasher, who, being a fellow sports vehicle, is typically his preferred target during battles. I just hope they don't win my battle. Scooter. Scooter was the resident inventor of the Guardians. He was extremely bright and possessed a slew of tools that enabled him to break into computers. Scooter was also armed with a hologram generator which allowed him to generate illusions to mislead attackers or offer shelter for himself. He was unarmed but attempted to have blasters installed in lieu of his hologram generator for a short while before realizing the latter is much more in touch with his personality and switching it back. He has a friendly competition with his colleague Garden Turbo, making fun of the more powerful Garden's lack of brains. Scooter has become excellent friends with a youthful human astronaut named Nick Burns since his stay on Earth, seeing him as a kindred soul. And he's not showing up on any of our scanners. Impossible, he must be down there. Smallfoot. Leader One's closest and greatly trusted soldier is Smallfoot, a tracker. She makes up for her lack of stature, wit, heart, and persistence. Smallfoot is frequently seen playing around with Scooter, but she admires Leader One and is frequently caught battling with him. Trouble follows her everywhere she goes. Smallfoot's drive causes her to be impetuous and happy to help the experienced and senior garden warriors at time. She can shoot energy blasts from the two bulbs on her chest while in robot mode. She transforms into a pickup truck. He employs a tow cable with a hook in both modes. One of the earliest GoBots advertisements featured Smallfoot. The GoBots character of the same name inspired the Autobot Smallfoot. We'll be ready next time. Zemon. Another one of the Guardians is Zemon. He is a well-known Garden leader. He is one of the Guardians' commanders that are plotting to defeat the Renegades. It must be noted that the Renegade robot Herfiend seems similar to Zemon in the pilot series owing to animation problems. 
He intends to give up the world to Psykel in order to escape being annihilated by the Renegade. In Nova Beam segment number 54, Zemon is aboard Gobatron with stocks as well as Pathfinder when they receive word that the planet Nirolax Sun has become unstable. Due to animation flaws, he is occasionally shown to be Renegade, her fiend. The Renegades Psykill Psykill was the wicked renegade's leader in Challenge of the Gobots. He was formerly a guardian and a buddy of Leader One. He desired to be the only ruler of Gobatron in order to better defend it because he believed he was the most powerful guardian, whereas Leader One advocated for democracy. As a result, Psykill broke free from the guardians to become the commander of the renegades. He desired to capture the Gobot home planet and seize complete control. He was a threat to the existence of the Guardians because he was merciless. Psykill sought to attack Earth with the aid of shady Unicom researcher Dr. Braxis, but the Guardians foiled his intentions. He was finally apprehended by the Guardians. <laughs> Crasher Despite her wild disposition, the female Crasher has been one of Psykill's most faithful renegades. Engaging in demolition derbies is one of her favorite activities. During questioning, she acknowledged having a fondness for Leader One prior to the Guardians and Renegades clashing. Unlike other Gobots, she appears to rarely utilize her hand-mounted blasters, preferring to employ a distinctive assault in which she stamps her foot on the ground to generate a tremendous earthquake-style energy discharge capable of trafficking its victim in much the same way as a heat-seeking missile. Crasher's apparent insanity effectively leaves her brave, and she has a vengeance towards the Guardian Turbo, seldom avoiding an opportunity to combat him. She unfortunately for her tends to take any failure or challenge very personally. Copter Copter, like the majority of the Renegades, isn't particularly bright. He has a wicked sense of humor and frequently lets out a cruel chuckle when he encounters a lesser adversary. He has the ability to unleash energy bursts from his hands and eyes. Copter may utilize his rotor blades to produce localized storms in either mode or a sword or whirling handheld blade weapon in robot mode. He employed a tractor beam in vehicle mode to pull items as large as him while flying. In the premiere episode, The Battle of Gobatron, Crasher and Copter assisted Psykill in stealing the Astro Beam and fleeing Gobatron to Earth. Copter was Psykill's usual henchman on the Renegade's repeated expeditions to Earth, starting with their very first attempt in order to take over the planet. I leave you in charge, Fighter. The Guardians must be resisted at all costs. Vitor. Vitor can turn into a revolutionary jet fighter. Vitor can shoot laser beams through his fists when in robot form, in addition to his jet mode, which is equipped with two laser guns. He also has monitoring and communication devices, and frequently gets intelligence for Psykill from the Garden HQ. Vitor was a Garden at first and a close buddy of Psykill. Vitor switched to the Renegades after becoming dissatisfied with Garden policies. His continuous allegiance meant that he seldom traveled to Earth with Psykill, instead frequently was entrusted with control of Rogue Star. When the Renegades' stronghold on Gobatron is invaded, he is arrested by the Guardians but flees when an errant blast from Blaster unlocks his cell door. That's good enough! Get out of the way! <laughs> Dr. Go Another one of the Renegades is Herr Fien. He is the Renegade mad scientist in residence and he speaks with a heavy German accent. Dr. Go is another name for him. His alternative mode, a Porsche 928S, is the same as the Decepticon Transformer known as Dead End. Herr Fien is assigned the moniker Dr. Go in the cartoon GoBot series. Dr. Go features in the first episode of Battle for Gobatron. It should be mentioned that the Dr. Go Renegade seems similar to Zemon in the premiere series owing to animation problems. Psykill orders Dr. Go to create robot replicas of the Guardians based on recordings he had taken of the actual Guardians. Gobot's Origin Story the first episode of this amazing series is named Battle for Gobatron and begins the exploration of the interesting premise of the series. In the pilot episode, the metallic world of Gobatron is now in strife in the remote depths of the Milky Way. The Gobots and its native population are split into two divisions, 
the benevolent guardians who control Gobatron, and the malevolent renegades who wish to overrun it. Renegade commander Psykill and his subordinates Crasher, as well as Koptor, seize the guardians' astrobeam teleportation device and flee, leveraging their racist ability to change their artificial bodies into vehicle forms in their newest attempt for control. Handscuff, a guardian security officer, tries to stop them but is killed by Crasher's explosive shockwave powers. What you propose, Leader One? An assault on the Renegade Fortress tonight! Having returned to the Renegade stronghold, Psykill explains his plan to his gathered troops, recognizing that the Renegade's strong presence on Gobatron is stripping away. He intends to emigrate further to the planet Earth. The human ally, who already has made contact with the Earth, will assist them in establishing a new outpost from which they will be able to strike their home world. Leader One, the military leader of the Gardens, recommends a last attack upon the Renegade stronghold to rid Gobatron of the bad guys once and for all. Zemon as well as the Garden Council reach an agreement, and the Gardens start an all-out assault on the stronghold. Psykill places his second-in-command, Fetor, in control of activities on Gobatron and delegates command of the Renegade Army to him, while he, Koptur, and Crasher board a thruster for Earth. Fetor seeks permission to release the gigantic savage monster Zod upon the Gardens before Psykill departs, but Psykill refuses since he will need Zod for his own purposes in the near future. Scooter, a timid Garden engineer, to Reduces the direction of Psykill's thruster as it flies away, and Leader One accompanies him as well as Turbo in chase of the villains on board the command center. For the sake of the galaxy, we've got to stop him. In orbit around Earth, astronaut Matt Hunter leads new members Nick Burns as well as AJ Foster on a quest to repair the Argos satellite system, which is monitored by irritable scientist Dr. Braxis from Operations Control on Earth. When the operation is over, they are prepared to return to Earth on board their shuttle, the Intrepid, when they observe the renegade thruster emerge from hyperspace, destroying the Argos. Braxis and General Newcastle, unable to detect the massive spacecraft of their scanners due to its stealth mechanism, do not trust Hunter's assertions. As a result, Hunter refuses to obey orders to retreat to base and launches off in hunt of the renegade vessel. Copter discovers the Intrepid when Psykill instructs him to land Thruster inside the wasteland so they may eliminate their human followers without being noticed. Copter guns down the Intrepid after Thruster lands, and then he and Crasher pursue the three humans through the desert. Fortunately, the Guardians come quickly to save the humans, but this compels Psykill to enter the fight, and a blast from the Renegade Commander severely hurts Turbo. Leader One uses his own force field to protect both the Guardians as well as the humans against Renegade fire, but just as his strength is about to run out, Scooter senses the approach of a huge troop of humans. A team dispatched by General Newcastle in order to rescue Matt, Nick, and AJ. Both the Renegades and the Guardians flee before they are spotted, leaving all the three humans who saw the battle powerless to inform the higher-ups of what has happened. As a member of this board of inquiry, I demand that these astronauts be suspended immediately. Removed from duty, the three retire to Matt's residence for the evening, when Leader One approaches them under the cover of darkness with a plea for assistance. The Garden Commander doesn't bother waiting for an answer. Instead, he scoops up all of the three humans and transports them straight to the command center, whereupon he explains that they need assistance obtaining the electronic components required to save the wounded Turbo's life. AJ, as well as Nick, are eager to assist, and Matt receives a vow from Leader One to assist in restoring their careers with NASA when it's all said and done. Scooter goes with Nick to NASA's electronic warehouse to get the essential components, but as they are ready to return to the command post, Scooter's advanced and specialized senses sense renegades in a neighboring building. My sensors indicate renegades in that building! With the help of a skylight, they come to witness Psykill, Koptor and Crasher meeting with Psykill's human partner, Dr. Braxis. Braxis offers them the knowledge on the whereabouts of a powerful crystal identified as Sorium in exchange for Psykill's vow that the Earth would be his to control after the renegades have retreated. However, only as Braxis hands over the paperwork, the skylight collapses beneath Nick and Scooter, sending them plunging inside the lab. Psykill orders Copter to strike and the Renegade advances threateningly. Scooter as well as Nick are powerless in the face of the storm winds that Koptor creates with his rotors. The good guys finally manage to defeat the Renegades and escape, and in the next few episodes when the Renegades raid an arctic island named Stolbovoy, in search of the energy source Sorium, the Guardians must battle with the formidable monster Zod. 
Daikil assaults KN Mountain, utilizing a sorium powered gadget to gain control of every human mind on the planet. NORAD's headquarters are located on KN Mountain, which is located in Colorado, America. NORAD, also known as the North American Aerospace Defense Command, is a bi national aerospace command stationed at KN Mountain that provides early warning and air defense for North America. General Lindley was in the command of NORAD when the GoBots first made direct contact with Earth. Leader One instructs Turbo as well as Scooter to escape while he shields their departure. The duo is reluctant to give up on their commander, but he insists. Nevertheless, as soon as they have departed, an explosion by the command center blasts Leader One out from the sky, and he is captured by Crasher. Farewell, Guardian! <laughs> With the planet against them and Leader One imprisoned by the Renegades, Scooter and Turbo set off on the run. But the Guardians are reunited and must break Psykill's grasp on the Earth in order to preserve Gobatron from a large and dangerous fleet of Zods. Turbo, find Scooter and the kids. Meanwhile, we've got a score to settle with Psykill. Leader One devises a plan to utilize the Astro Beam to transport the Sorium off Earth and into the route of the Zod Armada. The resulting explosion decimates the whole fleet and Psykill's thruster gets caught in the blast and is flung spinning across space. Braxis is carried off to jail intending to plead temporary insanity as the Guardians get ready to return home carrying Crasher and Copter as their hostages. If their minds weren't already made up, Turbo invites Nick and AJ to join them in tracking down Psykill, and General Lindley notifies all of them that NASA seems to have a few thousand questions for them, and all ends as well as the GoBots as well as their human friends blast off for GoBotron. You're not getting away, Psykill. Cartoon Cast No animated series is complete without its wonderful cast, and the same can be said about the challenge of the GoBots 2. Lou Richards, the voice of Leader One, Lou Richards, who was born into a military family, went to Scotch Plains Fanwood High School, located in New Jersey, as well as Brunswick High School in Maine. Lou became interested in university radio at KTXT while a teenager at Texas Tech University. His first professional job was working all night at Lubbock, Texas for KLBK. Arthur Burkhart, the voice of Turbo. Arthur Burkhart had been born in New York, USA on January 1, 1947. He is well recognized for his work on networks in 1976, Action Force in 1985, and The Transformers the Movie in 1986. Frank Welker, the voice of Scooter. Frank Welker grew up in the state of Colorado. He moved to California to pursue his passion and began a career in voice acting that has lasted five decades, including hundreds of credits. Frank has voiced Fred Jones in Hannah Legendary Barbera's Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? in 1969, among other Scooby credits. B.J. Ward, the voice of Smallfoot. B.J. Ward was born in Wilmington in Delaware in the U.S. on September 16, 1944. She is well known for her roles in the Scooby-Doo Project in 1999, The Page Master in 1994, and Action Force in 1985. She used to be a Playboy bunny before she began doing voice work. Bernard Erhard, the voice of Psykill. On February 6, 1934, Bernard Erhard was born. He was an actor best known for his roles in Firefox in 1982, Little Nemo in 1989, and Visionaries Knights of the Magical Light in 1987. He was often cast as a villain due to his deep voice, which was suited to depict passionate personalities. Marilyn Lightstone, the voice of Crasher. Marilyn Lightstone was born and brought up in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, and her birth date is June 28, 1940. She is an actress as well as a writer, best known for her roles in Heavy Metal in 1981, Road to Avonlea in 1990, and In Praise of Older Women in 1978. Bob Holt, the voice of Copter. Bob Holt began his acting career in 1950, portraying Octavius Caesar throughout Julius Caesar. All through the 60s, 70s, and 80s, Bob performed voices for primary and secondary characters in a variety of animated television shows and films, many of which were based on Dr. Seuss's books. Philip L. Clark, the voice of Dr. Go. Philip L. Clark, born in Atlanta, Georgia in the U.S. on September 8, 1938, was an actor and producer who worked as Doom 3, Resurrection of Evil in 2005, as well as Aladdin in 1992 and The Little Mermaid in 1989. He passed away on 23rd April, 2013. Come on, Turbo! Let's put him out of commission! Interesting facts about the cartoon. The GoBots challenge was based on Japanese machine robo toys and was dubbed Machine Men inside Australia. The Japanese animation Machine Robo Revenge of Kronos was distributed in France as a follow-up to the American series. The show is set in the future and Psykill has been reunited. GoBots Battle of the Rock Lords, a big screen movie, was also launched in 1986. 
month prior to the Transformers the movie. The series also has a few animation goofs. During vehicle mode, the face of Scooter is positioned between his handlebars, while Psych Hill always raises his head when he is a motorcycle. The latter gives the impression that he has only partially transformed. Gods. You know them as guardians, but before long, there'll be nothing but scrap. What happened to the GoBots? The GoBot series isn't the most well known fandom today. It's not even the most successful franchise featuring machine entities that can transition from things like automobiles into conscious robots. And if you're in one of the younger generation, you might not have heard of such shape-shifting robots until lately. There's a good explanation behind this. According to Sci-Fi Wire, GoBots were first presented in the United States in the year 1983. Bandai, the original producers, teamed up with Tonka, and suddenly GoBots were flooding toy stores throughout. Then came the competition. As per Game Informer, Hasbro debuted Transformers in the United States a year later, and the GoBot series had its first severe setback. Transformers' marketing and quality were light years ahead of GoBots. GoBots had a mythology that could only be discovered by reading the box of their toys, but Transformers had one that could be seen on TV. With the Transformers animated show imprinting a decades-long picture in the minds of 80s youth all throughout the United States, the GoBots needed to do something to stay on top. Tonka collaborated with Hanna-Barbera to develop their own animation, Challenge of the GoBots, through Newsbreak in 1984. For a brief moment, it appeared as if they may be able to compete with the Transformers series, but the GoBots animation only lasted one season, albeit a 65-episode season. According to IMDB, the animated series Transformers series went for four seasons and generated a variety of spin-offs, including numerous additional cartoons, those great CGI flicks and even comic books, but GoBots just couldn't compete. According to a Washington Post report at the time, Hasbro as well as Tonka made a simultaneous statement in 1991 about the two firms merging. Because Transformers acquired GoBots, they did not have to compete with them anymore. The Transformers wiki referenced GoBots multiple times and it stated as a general knowledge and entries regarding the franchise that the GoBots universe is regarded as a parallel realm of the Transformers universe. We may never see another GoBots toy for a long period of time. It appeared that there would be no GoBots media outside the occasional reference in Transformers films or episodes. In the 2010s, Warner Brothers published the classic challenge of the GoBots on DVD. In 2019, IDW released a five-issue GoBots comic book series. It was the first significant new GoBots content since the mid-late 1980s. The comic is still available on Goodreads, as well as other sites, but it is a very limited edition. Even yet, it's more than anybody could have predicted when the GoBots brand went bust a quarter century ago. The recent revival of GoBots media is most likely not a coincidence, Styles ebb and flow, and nostalgia arrives in nearly predictable waves. In the 2000s, we witnessed flared jeans that seemed like modern adaptations of bell buttons of the 70s. For example, and it appears that the 80s are making a comeback as we speak. Programs like Stranger Things, Ash vs. the Evil Dead, and Cobra Kai, as well as remakes of legendary 80s movies like Dune, show that everything with a cult fandom from the 80s has a good chance of obtaining a modern recreation. It's your turn, Renegade. As for MovieWeb, Hasbro filed a trademark application for the GoBots brand in 2015. This was not only a renewal of their previous trademark, but two different ones for a future television series, as well as toys or goods. Other than that, when the firm originally filed for the patent, there hasn't been much discussion about a new program, but it does provide for a potential of one to happen in the future. Particularly with 80s nostalgia still prevalent, will there be a new animation or film? Only time will tell. If you enjoyed this video, click on the like button and comment below about which other movie reviews you would want to watch. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. The game's finished. Yes, and guess who's the winner?